Let's do an example. By the way, this is the tides at the Bay of Fundy. That's why I thought, like, I would help, but my hands are tied. <laughs> Kidding. That's such a bad pun. So there's a place in Canada, actually, uh, has huge, huge tides. I think it's a place with the largest tides in the world. But in Canada, it's called the Bay of Fundy. It's uh, right near where my mom's family is from, actually, in um, yeah, eastern Canada. So the tides at the Bay of Fundy, they can be modeled by this. H of T equals 0.75 sine of BT plus 1.15. Notice we don't know what B is. Ooh. They tell us H of T is the height of the water in meters. Now that's the height, it's a little bit complicated, and I remember thinking, like, how did they define this? You could define it based on some baseline or something. You could even call it the depth of the water if you wanted. So that's a little bit dubious and ambiguous here, but let's just call it the height for now. Height above what is a better question. Uh, T is the time since midnight in hours. So the first question is, what is the amplitude of this? Well, if you remember this, what I just told you, the letter in front is the amplitude directly. So that means that, well, what's the amplitude then? In this case right here, amplitude is just A. That's just this A term. In this case, A is 0 0.75. So the amplitude then is just 0 0.75, must be in meters. There we go. That was actually kind of easy, wasn't it? Now, the period is 12 hours, so they tell us that now, okay? So we're going to have to use this, what's B? Well, you remember, though, period is 360 over B. So let me use this. I'll say fine. I'll write it down. The period equals 360 degrees over B. I'm going to use this equation. But now I know that the period isn't uh, just this. It's actually 12 equals 360 over B because we're told the period is 12 hours. So because of that, then B comes up. 12 comes down. Okay, so B equals 360 over 12. All right, so what do we do with that? Well, we could calculate it. So it's going to be, let's see, 3 would be 36 out of 0. So there you go, 30. So now I know that B equals 30. That's nice to know. All right, so that means now I can rewrite my equation. So watch carefully. I'm going to rewrite my equation now. I think that's maybe helpful. So I'll say, so H of T equals 0 0.75 times the sine of, and instead of b, I put in 30t plus 1.15. This is going to be the kind of key to doing the rest of it, I think. So this right here is, is my equation now for it. Okay, so this is, this is my equation. So how high will the water be at 5 o'clock in the morning? Well, it helps to think about how we deal with it. Remember, t is time since midnight. So since midnight, t is actually just 5. Okay, that actually wasn't so bad. So t equals 5. So what do I do then? I say h of 5 is what I have to do. So the height when the time is 5 is just going to be, let's see, 0 0.75 times the sine of 30 times 5, all that plus 1.15. That might be a nice way to do it. Um, I mean, you could go ahead and calculate it. In fact, let me do that now. So I'll just open up my calculator here, and let me just do it like this. So I'll say, all right, so it's 0.75. Time to make sure I'm in the right mode here. Now, if you're HL, you'll be changing modes a lot. If you're SL, just leave it in degree mode. So 0.75 times the sine of, let's see here, it's going to be 30 times 5. Close bracket, that's good. All that plus 1.15. My answer then is uh, one point, can you say that's one point, what's that, five, two, five, so I'll say one point, five, three, the three significant figures. So roughly 1.53 meters. That is my height there. All right, now comes the interesting part, I think. In the first 12 hours, at what times will it be 1.7? It's a little bit more complicated because you're trying to set your height equal to 1.7 and it sounds complicated. I think the best way to do this is to actually graph it. So let's graph. We're going to graph two equations. We're going to graph y equals 1.7 because that's what it means to be equal, right? We want 1.7 to be the same as all this. So I'm also going to graph y equals my equation there. 0.75 times sine of 30t uh, plus 1.15. So instead of t, of course, I'll make it x. Because my calculator doesn't like t's, but it does like x's. Maybe I'll make it x. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. 
So we're going to do the graph of that one. Let's see here. I'll open up a new graph. Here we go. And I'll just try to put this in here. So 0 0.75 times the sine. Getting slightly annoying, but we can do this, huh? 30 times x. All that plus 1.15. Boom. Now, I want this in the first um, 12 hours. So do you notice then this one right here? It goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up again. And then the first 12 hours, where is that? You want to send, uh, let's just see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So somewhere up here, right up there, right? This is 12. All right, so this is 12 right here. I have to draw that, don't I? So I'm going to try to sketch this graph. Let me see if I can here. So the sketch looks something like, let's see here. Uh, instead of X, maybe I'll make it T just for make it nicer to look at. This is H of T. That's really what it is. This is the Y and the X values. And the graph went like this. So it starts off at some height. And in fact, we know that height, don't we? We found the height was actually, um, oh no, we don't know that. But we can figure it out. But anyway, it starts off at some height, goes up, then down, then up like this, right? So I'll draw it like this. So it goes sort of up and down, then up, and down like this. But in the first 12 hours, this is the important part, in the first 12 hours, it's gone up, then down, and then back up again only a little bit. So it's only like here. Like here, it's like at around 12 or so, something like this. And I need to also graph, remember, I need to graph y equals, so I'll put a tab here, 1.7. Boom, this graph crosses it as well. So you notice, and I'm just going to look at where that graph crosses this. So that graph right there was a red one, let's just say. So I'll make it like this. Something like this. Okay, so this one right here was a graph of, you know, the curvy one. That was the sine one. And this here was 1.7. It's this one. So the whole question is, how many times do they meet in the first 12 hours? They don't meet up here. They don't meet that third time because at that third time it's way over here. Notice that's at like at 14 or so. So in the first 12, they only cross twice. I only want these first two. So I only want this one here. This is the harder part of this question. This one and this one are the only two points that I'm looking for. So I'm going to ask my calculator for those points. I'm going to ask it for that one and for that one. Let's see if we can do this. I mean, there'll be T, although my calculator will call them X's. Let's just see what I can get here. So I'll say t equals, and it'll be an approximate, and I'll get a second one. Let's see what I get here. So I'll get two different answers. Right? I'll get this one, and I'll get this one. Let's see here. So the first one on the left, let's see here. I'm going to ask my calculator for that by doing menu. I'll do analyze, and I'll say intersection. Intersect left and right. Here we go. So do you see it's 1.57? So I'll put that down, and so it's roughly 1.57 hours. And the other one, let's see here, I go to analyze, do intersection again, and it's uh, here, so it's 4.43 as my x value. So t is 4.43 hours. Now you could have just said that was your answer, okay? So you could say t equals approximately, you know, 1.57 hours and t is approximately 4.43 hours. With the way the question is phrased, you're probably okay. This is probably just fine. However, if you want to find out like what time is it, because this is, this is after this amount, right? But this isn't really a time in a proper notation. So let's be very, very careful. What is, what is 0 0.57 hours? Because we want this in minutes, right? So this is 0 0.57 hours. And we got to figure out sort of what... What do we do about this? Well, it's going to be 0 0.57 times 60 minutes. So let's do that. So let's uh, actually try to figure this out. So 0 0.57 times 60 is how many minutes? Oh, it's 34 minutes. And similarly, 0 0.43 hours, what's that? Well, it's going to be 0 0.43 times 60. Let's do that. I'm just trying to show you how to do the answer uh, sort of more properly. So times 60, that's going to be 
yeah, let's just say 25. So really, a better answer would be, let's do the real time here. So t would actually be approximately equal to, let's see, one hour after midnight, that means it must be 0, 100, so it's like 1 in the morning, um, and 34 minutes. You know, so it's actually 1.34 in the morning. And, I mean, we don't always have to write the minutes. We normally just go like this, right? And we can say that the t is also approximately equal to 4.25 a.m. So this is even better, I think, this this way of doing it like this. I think this is at least a, a better way to do it. This one here, I would say, I'll say or even better would be this one. Okay, Even better is this answer right here. Okay, why would you ever care? Well, there's lots of periodic phenomena in the world. There's like annual temperatures go up and down. I mean, even the bicycle wheel, if you think about how its path is, at least its height um, over time, that is periodic and sinusoidal. So is a Ferris wheel's height above the ground. If you did that over time, weather patterns repeat continually, tides like we just saw. So there's lots of different examples of sinusoidal.